A huge thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. More details about their offer later on. Two years ago, I published a video where simple AIs learn to move using two muscles and four feet, all controlled by small neural networks. These networks were developed using an evolutionary algorithm inspired by NEAT. If you want a detailed explanation of the algorithm, you can check this previous video. In this one, I wanted to try a different approach. The goal this time is to get as far as possible within a fixed time limit. In this second iteration, each agent consists of a spine and four legs, with two joints per leg. Each joint is actuated by a virtual muscle that, unlike a real one, can both contract and extend. As a final touch, we can attach sprites to the skeleton. This gives us a rough approximation of a cat that's good enough for now. Muscles have an energy reserve and their consumption is based on the force they exert. The lower the energy reserve, the weaker the muscle becomes. The recovery rate is defined as a percentage of the maximum reserve regenerated per second. A neural network then controls these muscles to enable the agent's movement. In this initial version, the inputs represent each muscle's current stretch level. The outputs specify the target stretch for each muscle. Hidden layer neurons and their connections emerge spontaneously during training. For this project, I decided to switch to the Box2D physics engine. If you're wondering why I didn't use my own one, let me show you my early attempts with it. At the beginning, everything was going well and some interesting results were starting to emerge. Everything changed when an agent discovered a bug that allowed it to literally fly off to new horizons. This innovation quickly spread to all the others. Unable to determine the source of the problem, I turned to Box2D, drawn by its remarkable stability. You've almost certainly used it without realizing, as it's the physics engine behind the game Angry Birds and is also used in the Unity game engine, among many other projects. The training algorithm I'm using benefits greatly from having a large number of agents exploring simultaneously. In this case, I'll be using 1000 agents for the optimization process. Now that everything is ready, let's check performance. Unfortunately, this is way too slow to achieve reasonable training times. After running a profiler, it appears that the first few frames take several hundred milliseconds to update, before the computation time eventually stabilizes at around 16 milliseconds. Fortunately, we can leverage a specific characteristic of this project to speed things up. Since the agents do not interact with each other at all, we can easily parallelize the physics calculations, as they are completely independent. Instead of having a single world containing all the agents, I will create as many worlds as I have available threads and distribute the agents among them. For this particular task, I used an NVIDIA Jetson Thor to run the training. This mini PC has 14 physical cores, so I will create 14 worlds, each containing 72 agents. Let's take a look at the performance with this parallelized approach. The difference is night and day. The computation is now 12 times faster. This level of performance is perfectly viable for getting results quickly. Out of curiosity, I compared the performance of the Jetson Thor with my desktop PC, which is equipped with an i7-12700K. This test focuses solely on the CPU, as this project is not GPU accelerated. To compare them, I used the maximum number of threads available on each platform as my goal was to see which one is faster under real-world conditions. 
And here are the results. The i7 is about 5% faster than the Jetson, which is already quite impressive, considering the latter's form factor. But the comparison gets really interesting when we look at the power consumption of the two devices. For these results, the i7 was drawing 140 watts, while the Jetson only needed 30 watts. This huge difference in efficiency is why I decided to use the Jetson for the training process. This video is not sponsored by NVIDIA, but a big thank you to them for providing me with a Jetson Thor. If you'd like more information on the Jetson platform, you'll find a link in the description. With performance no longer an issue, we can finally start the training. Let's see what our approximate cats are capable of. Since I don't have a clear idea of which parameter values to use, I'll start with fairly low ones and adjust them based on the results. After 10 iterations, the progress is not very impressive. A closer look reveals that the joints are being mishandled, leading to invalid configurations. This is problematic for several reasons. Not only can it result in invalid solutions, but it also wastes CPU resources on simulating inefficient agents. Therefore, I'm adding a condition to automatically eliminate any agents with inverted joints. Let's restart the training with these new modifications. The eliminated agents are displayed in red and quickly removed from the simulation, which frees up CPU time and narrows the search to more promising solutions. It seems to be working well. Now let's track the agent's progress over the iterations. A major breakthrough occurs at iteration 60, with the appearance of something that looks a bit like a step. Ten iterations later, the progress is considerable. Let's see what happens next. After 240 iterations, we're starting to get a pretty good result, although it's still a bit jerky.
This is the best iteration from this first attempt. I think the result is quite good. I wonder how realistic this 6 watt value is for a 5 kg walking cat. The current parameters result in a slow walk, so I will increase their values for the next iteration. With more power and strength in the muscles, getting started is much less of a struggle. Progress is much faster with the added power, even though the movement itself is still a bit awkward at this stage. And here's the final result. We've achieved a much higher speed and the motion is once again quite smooth. Let's try to increase the muscle power even further to see what kind of speed we can reach. Once again, getting started was quite easy and progress has been rapid.
This is the best result I've managed to achieve. With such a simple structure, I haven't been able to train foster agents without them developing awkward movements. I'd be very curious to see what could be accomplished with more sophisticated structures, ones that more closely mimic an actual cat's skeleton. If you'd like to dive deeper into the topic, feel free to join the Discord server. You can find demos and source code for my projects on my Patreon. Links are in the description. A huge thank you to all the Patreon members for their support and a special thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in this kind of project but have never programmed before, Python is an excellent gateway into the world of coding. A great place to learn Python is Brilliant, the sponsor of this video. Brilliant offers a variety of courses, including programming lessons designed for absolute beginners who have never written a single line of code. The wide range of available activities will guide you from the simplest concepts all the way to writing complex programs. Each lesson is built around hands-on visual exercises and real-world examples. This makes the learning process not only enjoyable, but also highly effective, keeping you actively engaged every step of the way. Whether you're using a computer or the mobile app, you can practice every day from anywhere, ensuring steady progress. By using the QR code or the link in the description, you can start learning today for free and get a 20% discount on the annual subscription, all while supporting this channel. Thanks again to Brilliant for their support.